Number 8. Wang Feng Yu Crime on the high seas is almost impossible to effectively police, and murders occur constantly in the open ocean. Considering this, a murder in 2012 that took place in the Indian Ocean left authorities entirely clueless as to what happened until a cell phone left in a taxi all the way in Fiji, thousands of miles away, was handed into law enforcement as a misplaced item. On that cell phone was the damning evidence that showcased the brutal crime. The footage displayed a chilling scene where four men cling to the floating debris in the water as waves attempt to drag them to their death. Several large fishing ships circle them, but not for a rescue. None of the men have life jackets, and no one makes a move to help. Suddenly, an off-camera voice shouts in Mandarin to fire, fire, fire again. Bullets rain down on the helpless men, and in an act of no remorse, Later, the crew hands pose for photos found on the cell phone, laughing as if the slaughter simply hadn't happened. This showcased the difficulties with law enforcement on the high seas. It's still unknown who the victims were or even why they were killed. Once police saw the footage and the pictures, they worked tirelessly to scour Facebook to identify the crew hands and went through ship databases to match those in the video to ones they could track. Eventually, they were able to isolate and arrest the captain of the Taiwanese ship Ping Shin 101, Wang Feng Yu, a 43-year-old Chinese national after the group gave up his name. But still, the details of the case are still unclear, and justice remains almost a decade delayed. Number 7. Kenneth McKee On July 19, 2018, 17 people were killed in a tragedy as the Stretch Duck 7 sank during a storm. The duck boat, an amphibious vehicle developed by the U.S. military to act as a valid mode of transport both on and off land, went deep in the Table Rock Lake despite severe weather warnings and wind speeds upwards of 70 miles an hour that would make travel extremely dangerous. The captain, Kenneth McKee, was charged with 47 counts of negligence and was even tried under an old statute called Seaman's Manslaughter, whereby it is necessary to charge a ship captain for criminal negligence in ensuring the safety of his crew and passengers. And this negligence was extreme. According to reports, not only had McKee heard the weather warning, but he also didn't tell any of his passengers to wear life jackets to prepare for a worst-case scenario. The storm flipped the Stretch Duck 7 with all 29 passengers and two crew members members left fighting for their life in the waters. Even apart from those that were killed, the survivors had to receive serious medical attention in order to recover. But still, the blame of the scenario remains decidedly ambiguous. As the duck boats can operate on both land and water, they are regulated by the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Coast Guard, leading to a mix of regulations they have to adhere to. Ultimately, the case is still being looked over and is unlikely a verdict will service until later this year. Number 6. Jerry Boylan Negligence is the cause of many maritime accidents, as you've seen from this video. Jerry Boylan's failure to follow safety protocols as the captain of a ship called the Conception led to 34 deaths in September of 2019. The Conception was a 75-foot or just under 23-meter commercial scuba diving vessel that had 33 passengers and six crew members aboard for a pleasant holiday dive trip that eventually devolved into a nightmare. The ship caught on fire one night as the passengers, crew, and captain slept, and the blaze grew rapidly. All 33 passengers died of smoke inhalation, unable to escape since there was only a single exit to the galley with thick smoke at one end and fire at the other. The crew members were forced to jump overboard after waking Boylan up, who was able to make a call to the Coast Guard before jumping himself. The cause of the fire is still unknown, but whose fault it was is not. On December 1, 2020, a grand jury charged Boylan with 34 separate charges of manslaughter for the deaths of the 33 passengers and one crew member. According to the indictment report, he failed to conduct mandatory fire drills and crew training, and to make matters worse, he didn't post a night watch or patrol as required by law. Boylan can expect to be in prison for a long time, with each charge of Siemens manslaughter carrying a maximum sentence of 10 years. Do you think Boylan got a fair sentence? Let us know in the comments, and if you're liking this video so far, be sure to subscribe to see more. Now, back to the high seas. Number 5. Francesco Chattino On January 13, 2012, the Costa Concordia, an Italian cruise ship, hit an underwater rock and capsized, 
sinking to the shallow waters right off Tuscany's coast. The shipwreck caused 32 to lose their lives. Francesco Chattino, the captain of the ship, claims innocence for the tragedy, insisting the underwater rock was not charted and that it was not his fault. The rock tore open a 70-meter or just under 230-foot gap in the ship's hull that let water enter the vessel, submerging the engine and the generators. Without propulsion or emergency power, the ship was unable to navigate properly, relying entirely on its own weight as it slowly tipped over. But Shatino abandoned the vessel prematurely while 300 passengers were left on the ship as it sank. Passengers stated that he had been drinking heavily before taking control of the ship. Whatever claim to his innocence he had was thrown out the door with this, and he was charged with manslaughter and sentenced to 16 years in prison. It's thanks to the rescue teams that the death toll wasn't any higher, and this disaster could have easily become one of the worst maritime incidents in recent history. Number 4. Dean Michael Seeley On September 17, 2020, a 27-year-old man named Zach Forte was killed in a boat crash, and his body was thrown into the water. The captain of the boat, Dean Michael Seeley, evaded arrest for over a month, avoiding accountability for having commanded the boat while he was drunk. Forte had just moved to South Florida before the accident, and it took a joint effort from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to find his body 12 hours after the crash. Seeley fled the scene of the crime and did not turn himself in, but the very thing that caused the accident in the first place was the reason he got caught. Seeley was getting drunk at the Royal Beach Palace Hotel bar before suddenly growing extremely violent. Witnesses claim they saw him break a computer screen in the hotel's business center and then throw a remote into the TV screen. He became involved in a confrontation with the staff where a bartender tried to calm him down. Seeley threw a beer can at his head and tried to fight him, but the front desk manager broke it up and the two were able to subdue Seeley before he could cause any more trouble. The two waited for the police to arrive and as they did, the officers noted that they could smell the alcohol on his breath. The details behind the case remain murky, as it is unknown how Forte knew Seeley or how Seeley evaded capture for so long. He faces charges of vehicular homicide, voting while under the influence, and leaving the scene of the crash, and that's not even counting the hotel incident. Number 3. Yuri Chaplinsky In an accident on the Danube River on May 29, 2019, 28 people were killed when the Viking Sign cruise ship collided with the Mermaid tour boat. In a case of criminal negligence, the captain of the Viking, Yuri Chaplinsky, struck the Mermaid carrying 35 people consisting mostly of South Korean tourists. The small vessel sank in just 7 seconds. While the captain of the ship denies any wrongdoing, the prosecution argued a very clear case. Chapinsky failed to pay attention and didn't focus on steering the ship for several minutes. And this led to the disastrous collision. The prosecution claimed he was distracted by personal reasons for the first five minutes since the vessel left the dock during a severe downpour. The two ships were traveling up the Danube before the larger ship overtook the Mermaid. Despite how close they were to each other, Chaplinsky failed to send any sort of radio signal to the other ship. This led to the Mermaid crossing the path of the larger vessel and sinking in a matter of seconds. Of the 35 people on board, seven survivors were thrown from the top deck at the moment of impact, while all the other passengers were killed. Of the 28 victims, 26 were South Korean, including one six-year-old girl. The tragedy drew the attention of the South Korean president, who sent in emergency rescue workers. As the scars from the 2014 boat disaster were still fresh in South Korean minds, the media placed significant resources to cover the case. In March of 2020, prosecutors charged Chaplinsky with reckless misconduct in waterborne traffic leading to mass casualties and 35 counts of failure to provide assistance after the collision. Number 2. Jack Shepard Nicknamed the speedboat killer, Jack Shepard was responsible for the death of 24-year-old Charlotte Brown in a December 2015 accident that led to both of them getting tipped over in the water. Two of them met on OkCupid and were just starting to date. Shepard was a successful IT consultant that earned a stable and high income, with a houseboat. But what led to his eventual downfall was the knowledge of his problems his boat had, including the steering and his unwillingness to fix them despite how pressing they truly were. The two of them had been drinking champagne late at night before deciding to take Shepard's boat up the Thames. While the two were on the boat, Shepard handed the steering wheel over to Brown right before the boat struck a submerged tree. The collision tipped both of them over, with Shepard found clinging onto the boat when he was fished out of the river, Brown's body entirely unresponsive. Rather than face charges with decorum, Shepard skipped his bail and flooded Georgia. He then rented out apartments for six months and continued working as a consultant before the media reported his whereabouts to the police. He was charged with six years in prison for manslaughter. To make matters worse, not only was he on the run, he was also constantly in contact with his lawyers as the trial was ongoing, being sent transcripts of evidence. 
For a man who was trying to have his cake and eat it too, as the judge put it, his actions were as cowardly as they were selfish. Number 1. Mark Bailey On June 1, 2019, Mark Bailey, the captain of the Double Marker, a fishing charter boat, held a family hostage while intoxicated. Bailey took five passengers out on the Sarasota Bay at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning for what was supposed to be a 12-hour excursion, but it soon turned violent. Bailey kept the family hostage for five hours on sea, threatening them with violence, weapons, and verbal assault. Apparently, their nightmare began when one of the passengers' 15-year-old sons got into a confrontation with Bailey over a beer. The boy's father sent him up to get a beer from the captain's pail, but he refused. However, the boy thought Bailey was joking and didn't put the can of beer back. In a state of drunkenness and extreme rage, the captain grabbed and broke the boy's necklace. At this point, his uncle saw and began yelling. The other passengers separated the fight, but the captain began drinking large amounts of rum and beer, claiming to have witnessed him smoking a joint, and one saying that he even saw him snort cocaine. The passengers asked the captain to bring the boat to shore five hours before they were supposed to, but the captain instead began driving the boat in circles, drinking and taking drugs from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. At one point, he even threatened to shoot the passengers and fired his gun into the water several times. The passengers were pretty intimidated, and they started sending discreet messages to their family members on the shore to call the Coast Guard and the police. Eventually, once the boat docked, Bailey was in for quite a surprise as he found dozens of officers and Coast Guard officials waiting to arrest him. For a holiday outing, the family could never have expected the situation to turn upside down in such a short span of time, and all over a can of beer. That's our list for today. Which of these incidents was the most surprising to you? Do you have any crazy boat stories of your own? Let us know in the comments down below, and if you're liking this video, subscribe for more content like this. See you next time on The Bad Badger!